I can think of so many ways to use this technique. It's too much fun to play with, and it gives you this organic sculptural look of ocean coral. Stick around for loads of ideas for how you can create it, use it, adapt it, and make it part of your own creative designs. Hey there, Sandy here. Welcome to another polymer clay video at keepsakecrafts.net. We are starting with just some polymer clay rolled out on well, I'm using the thickest setting of my pasta machine, which is about two and a half millimeters thick, but feel free to experiment with different thicknesses. You may get different results. The tool set I have here in front of me is a leather stamping tool set, and I really love these for polymer clay. If you don't have these, you don't want to get them, they're not very expensive, but if you don't want them, I will show you some alternatives in a minute. The type of coral that I am kind of sort of oh, getting the feel of, not really replicating, is called a zoanthid. And this stamp in this set best gives that look and feel. Again, feel free to experiment. So I am going to start by cutting out a shape, and you can do any shape you want here. Here's just a little heart cutter that I have. This is from Jessima Design and I will link to her Etsy shop where she has a lot of very nice cutters. And you'll be amazed at how easy this is. This is not a complex technique. The fun is just when you start playing with it and building with it and using it as components. So I've got my leather stamp here and I'm just pressing in and filling this. Now you can do the edges, you don't have to. I'm just filling it with this impression. I'm pressing fairly hard. I don't want like a light, wimpy impression like that one. I want it to be nice and deep, hence the thicker setting of the pasta machine. But like I said, experiment with different thicknesses. You may find you get different results. Now you'll notice as you're doing this, of course, it's going to change your shape a bit. It'll make it bigger and distort it a little. And as far as I'm concerned, that's just fine because I want this to be organic. Now if you want, you don't have to, but you can come in with this stamp. It's similar, but a lot smaller. And you can fill in spaces. So fill in the gaps between those circles, but you don't have to. It's just more texture. I was looking up ocean coral and found the zoanthids. There are so many more, though, that would be fun to imitate of the texture of and put them all together in something. Not, not trying to look like a coral reef, but just sort of abstract. Once you have your texture on there, now we're going to start opening it up and making holes and really getting that look. All I have here is a 1 8 inch ball tool. Again, what I am sharing with you in this video is just the very basics of making this. But I invite you to experiment. Try different tools. If you don't have these exact tools, no worries. Try something else. You'll probably get a similar but different look. The more you expand on the idea, the more different the look is and the more personal it will be and be your own design. So all I'm doing is pressing at or near the center of each of those larger impressions that I made and just opening that up a little. I'm not trying to be perfectly circular. I'm not trying to hit dead center on that dot, just kind of aiming for it. That's another way you can vary this, is to only maybe make holes in some of those areas, or maybe only a few, or even leave one strategic one closed and don't open it. This is pretty fragile at this point, so use a clay blade at a 45 degree angle on your tile and scoop this up, because the back isn't going to be open because we used a round tool. So I want to smooth this out because I want it to look good all the way through. And you can see you can kind of reshape it at this point too. And I'm going to peel the cat hairs out. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take this part of my tool, like the collar of the ball tool, 
and just poke it into all these holes and go around. You can even angle it outward a little. I just want to smooth out that ragged edge on the back side. Now, if you don't have a ball tool, you probably want to invest in one for polymer clay work, but you can also use a needle tool. This will make these edges a little bit more straight up and down. I kind of like them being more angled with the ball tool, but either way, will look good. And you just go around until those are all nice and neat. You can see the difference. They just look a little bit more open and purposeful. It looks more like a, a something from nature and less like something you sculpted. Now that I have the backside all smoothed out, we can deal with the edges if you want. This step is optional, but I really like the look. And you can use well, anything. What I love to use are either of these two stamps from the leather stamping set. I just love the edge that it gets. And all you do is press it around the edge and those lines just, I think, add so much. Now for clay, I didn't mention, I just used some scraps that were in my white clay bin. So there's pearl and there's others. It's kind of a putty off-white color. I'm going to use mica powders to color it. I'll show you some other things you can use in a minute. So once that is done, you can add mica powders if you want. Or if you're going to color it another way, you can bake it. And you can bake it flat. But what I really love to do is take something like a bath bomb mold or any bowl that you have, a glass or metal bowl that you have, and just put it on there. And I think I'm going to have the heart down, but I'm going to take these ruffles and kind of curl them up because that's pretty. And that just looks more natural. And you can bake that. Hey there, Sandy again with just a quick interruption to let you know if you love tutorials like this one that not only show you how to do a technique, but give you inspiration and help you grow your creativity, you should consider becoming a patron. My patrons, these lovely people, not only get a bonus video every month, but they also have closer access to me with video chats, sneak peeks at my creative process, and behind the scenes looks into my studio. If you like what I'm doing here on YouTube, you're going to love being a patron. And back to the video. Here are a few more shapes I've cut out to show you other ways you can texture this if you don't have the leather stamping set. I've just cut these out with some more Jessima Design cutters. These are really cute little pebbles. You can do a lot of fun things with them and they go so quick and you can play and experiment. So you might find other kinds of texturing tools like these. These are texture tips from Create Along. There aren't any quite so small as the ones in the leather stamping set. So you might want to use these on larger pieces. But you can still get a radial design that you can then open up. And actually, if you have larger stamps, you might want to come in well first with your 1 8 inch tool, as before. And you, you don't have to only focus on the areas and the centers of your stamping. But you might want to come in afterwards for maybe a select few with a larger ball tool. This is a quarter inch ball tool. And maybe open up just a few of those spaces. Here's another one I did earlier with the Create Along texture tips. And it's not the same look as this, but it's similar and certainly worth playing with. And you can see, especially with the larger ball tool, you definitely want to go in and clean up the backside. And if there's still ragged edges, we can clean that after baking, but it's best to get it better anyways before you bake it. Now, if you don't have any of those kinds of stamps, you can simply use a texture sheet like I have here. Press in some areas of your stamp 
and then just choose wherever you want with your ball tool. And maybe just a few strategic ones and don't do a lot. Even just, well, one, I don't know, two, three. So you can do that with a texture stamp. You can also use small cutters as stamps, so like these circle cutters. But of course, you're not going to cut. You're just going to use them to make a texture. And it doesn't have to be circles. I just think this is kind of fun. These little itty bitty. And the same thing. Or if you don't want to do any of the above, you don't have to. You can just use it as is. And just make the holes in a plain sheet of clay. And of course, clean out the back edges. Once you've baked your pieces, you just want to take a minute with a craft knife and clean up the holes from the back side. Because of the shape of the tool we use, there will just be little ragged bits. And you just use the tip of the knife and use your fingers and kind of twirl it so that you're taking off the tiniest amounts. This is one I've cleaned up and it's not a huge difference, but it does make a little bit of a difference. This one I haven't. This one I did the one hole. It just makes it look a little bit more tidy. For this piece, I just did the texture stamp and then I did that ruffled edge around the outside edges. And on this one, this also had the texture sheet. This one was done without any texture applied to it at all and it's pretty cool and interesting looking and ready for some kind of colorant. You can definitely use colored polymer clay I just was having fun experimenting with one color of clay and then moving on to the coloring later. So here's this one you watched me do earlier. I got my little roughly edges, cleaned up the back. So what are your options for coloring? Well, one is mica powders. I have some Perlex. I love these duo colors. They are so pretty and yummy. And you can just add them. You can add one color. Or like on this one, I put a different color on the outside edges. Yum! And then as with the other one, decide how you want to bake it. And I think I'm going to do the same thing. I like these little ruffly bits. And bake it like that. Other options for coloring. You can use alcohol inks. On this one, I put it on the inside of one of my bath bomb molds and baked it. And then I just took a textured sheet of clay textured the back, put that on the inside of the bowl, and put this on in there. Use this to kind of press it in. And so I didn't even use any liquid clay, but they're pretty well stuck together. And I'll do some kind of paint or colorant on the back side. But I like this because it really shows those holes through the back side. Because it's kind of difficult with these to get any sort of texture on the back because of the way we make it. So having two layers is cool. But you can just add alcohol ink. You might want to wear gloves so you don't get some kind of funky manicure. <laughs> this one I added alcohol ink and then I dry brushed it with white and I kind of blew out that hole down there. It definitely came out too big. So I think what I'm going to do is come in with my craft knife and actually carve it out a little bit more and then glue in a pearl. And won't that be just really pretty? Just an opportunity to get creative, you know? Other things you can do would be to add acrylic paints and then antique and highlight however you like. So this is an acrylic paint. This is Halo Blue Gold Lumiere. 
and I added that and then I dry brushed over with some white just to bring out the texture and this is a pair of earrings and these are just those little practice pieces like the ones you saw me make with the pebble cutters. Swellagant paints and patinas and I will link to a video talking about those are another great way to color these to really give them an antique kind of crusty look. So what kind of things can you make with these? Well, obviously earrings. You could make a pendant. This is one, I kind of made a mess of it. Um, I filled the inside with a uh, cornstarch, those water dissolvable packing peanuts, and then added a second one to the back after I baked this one, the top on a curved form. And I threw a pearl in there because I thought it was just fun to have something kind of rolling around on the inside. And I'll have to glue this back together, paint it somehow, but this would make a really pretty pendant. Little bowls. Here's one I'm going to make into a pendant. These two pieces. I've already glued a pearl to the back side of one on each side because I just liked the look of one shining through. And that's all. And I'm going to put these together. Now, now you could, um, it's kind of tricky, you could put three together and get even more volume in a form. You would have to do a little planning and get your shapes right. But for this one, I cut a strip of my clay and used this tool to texture the edges just like I showed you and then added some polybonder glue to one edge of my pod shape. Polybonder glue has the advantage and disadvantage of grabbing immediately. It grabs immediately so you better get it in the right place. But if you were to use liquid clay here it would be slippy and slidey. And where my pieces overlapped I just kind of let it overlap and let there be a little extra ruffle which I thought was sort of fun. So now I'm going to put this one on this side you want to use polybonder. It is a cyanoacrylate like super glue, but unlike super glue, this glue is formulated to hold up in the heat of an oven. So if you put something, if you glue something with super glue and then put it in an oven for another bake, chances are it's going to let go. This stuff won't, so you want to use this. So I get one shot. Let's see how I do. Line it up. Oh, not bad. Um, I have here... Oh, that worked better than I thought. And then I'll come in with some mica powders and do the edge, and I think I might, ooh, kind of shape those edges, and isn't that just a cool kind of pod pendant. Now that you know this technique, you'll want to learn more by watching the polymer clay sculpting playlist I put together for you. Happy creating!